Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. One for yourself. One for the one standing by you. Hallelujah. May we remain standing for the reading of the word of God this morning. Matthew chapter 25, 14 to 29th verse. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 29. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his servants, his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou had been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou had been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou had not sown, and gathering where thou had not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou art that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges. Then, and then at my coming, I shall have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given. And he shall have abundance. But from him that had not shall be taken away even that which he had. Amen. I want you to pray for yourself this morning. Tell the Holy Spirit to help you get a good understanding of the oracles of God that is coming forth this morning. Talk to God. Every one of you, you are here because of God and his word. As his word is about to come forth, ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. Not just understanding, but a good one. The kind that bringeth favor 
talk to God about that. Number two, ask God to open your spiritual eyes so you can behold wondrous things from the word of God that is coming forth from his altar this morning. Yes. Talk to God. And finally, ask God to bless you with his blessings out of his word this morning. The Bible says he sent forth his word to heal them and to deliver them from their afflictions. Is anyone afflicted this morning? Affliction simply means trouble. Are you troubled this morning? The Bible says, let him pray. You can ask God to deliver you through his word from the troubles that you have seen and have gone through over the times. You are sick, let the elders pray for you. I pray for you right now that the word of God that is coming forth bring healing to your bones. And bring healing to your flesh. Because the word of God is life to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. May all your flesh receive healing this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Unto you, Father, be glory now and forevermore. As you magnify the name of your son, Jesus Christ, this morning. Through the word of God and your hands, the spirit of God. In Jesus' name, we thank you for answered prayer. Amen. You may please be seated. The title of the message this morning is your grace require, requires your faithfulness. Your grace requires your faithfulness. In the narrative, the two servants who received five talents and two talents respectively came to give accounts. And after the account, the Lord or their master said, you have been faithful over a few things. You have been faithful over a few things. Amen. So we are talking about faithfulness this morning. But particularly I'm saying that your grace, your gifts, your talent as you may refer to whatever it is or how you say it, the Bible says that one day, the day of reckoning or the day of accountability will come and the benefactor, the one who gave you the gifts, will meet you and you will give accounts Thank God these two servants received a kind of praise from their Lord. And this is it. You have been faithful over a few things. May the Lord help all of us this morning. So that on the day of reckoning, the commendation will be 
that you have been faithful over a few things. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2, St. Paul, the apostle, made a very profound statement. And I read, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It is required in stewards or stewardship that a man be found faithful. A requirement. You may call it a law. That a man be found faithful. For example, the servants, the three servants whom the Lord gave the talents to. First of all, he says, the Lord gave them his goods. The goods do not belong to the three servants. It belonged to their master. That is why the Bible says that he gave them his. The possessive now over there is his. His goods. So, the Bible is saying that it is required in stewardship or stewards that a man be found faithful. If that statement is right, then it is expected that these three servants in their stewardship be found faithful. Be found faithful. Maybe let me finish you who a steward is. A steward is a person employed to manage. A steward is a person employed to manage and then give account of whoever or whatever is committed into his or her hands. I take that again. A steward is a person employed to manage and then give account of whoever or whatever is committed into his or her hands. I say whoever or whatever because sometimes you are required to manage the lives of people. Every parent here at the sound of my voice, those children are not your own. I repeat, they are not your own. The Bible says that children are heritage of the law. Psalm 127. They are heritage of the law. The word heritage simply means property. So children are the property of God. And if you happen to be a parent, I want to remind you this morning that God gave you those children. And therefore, if stewardship is anything to go by and you are a steward, it is required of you that you manage the lives of those children properly or appropriately. Because one day, the one who gave you the children will demand accountability from you. Can I get your Amy if you're a parent? Yes. All our sisters who are loitering around this morning, 
in whatever strange and dresses around and calling for some trade. I can tell you their parents will account for the reckless way they handle the lives of these children. Yes. They will account for it. Because those sisters and all those uh, Okada drivers sitting down there uh, doing all manner of drugs and over there, they are God's children. They are God's children. God created them. He gave them to some parents. You, you can give any excuse. Remember one of the servants in the narrative, the parable, was giving excuse. Why? He was giving excuse. Why he couldn't put the gift or the talent to use. You can also be a parent and give any excuse whatsoever for your children ending up the way they, they end up. Yes. The Bible says there is the stubbornness in the heart of every child. But the Bible doesn't end it over there. It says that, and the rod of correction shall kick out of that child that foolishness. So did you spare the rod when you should have used the rod? Did you spare the rod when you should have used it? If you did, you will account for it one day. Those of us who have been over pampered. <clears throat> Never learned any chores when you were growing up because you had servants to do that for you. And growing up, everything at, is at your behest. Unless you don't cry, your parents are pushing them to you. And you have become a spoiled child. You can blame anybody. But I can tell you, your parents will account for it. So the Bible says, spare not the rod. Spare not the rod, because the rod is meant for correction. You will grow up one day and nobody can correct you. Nobody can correct your children. How many times haven't we heard that some parents went to the school to beat the, 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 the teachers of their children? Have you heard that? It's a big shame, right? It's a big shame. So, a steward is a person who is employed to manage and then give account of whoever or whatever is committed into his or her hands. So, for instance, in Matthew 24, verse 14, the Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. In this case, the goods are not human beings. They are not human beings. Now, I remember one of the series I mentioned to you that you are a servant, but the moment responsibility is delivered into your hands, you are not just a servant anymore. You have become a steward. You have become what? A steward. There are some idle servants all over the place. When you go to our civil service, they are there plenty. 
they go to work, nothing to do from morning till evening. As soon as it is 3.30, they are packing their bags to leave. And this is an age-old, old habit. I've been a civil servant before. When I stopped teaching, I became a civil servant before coming into ministry. And it's amazing what happens. In fact, <laughs> one fire, they'll be flipping it the whole day. In fact, there's nothing even to look at in the fire. True or false? Yet at the, at, the, at the end of the day, or the man, they take their pay. No wonder this nation is where it is today. Because the Bible says that in stewardship, it is required that a man be found faithful. That a man be found faithful. So those three servants in the narrative in Matthew 24, pardon me, 25, they are all stewards. Why? Because the master gave them his goods. Later on, their goods were described as talent. And as we may find out in the latter part of the narrative, their goods were described as money. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's not everybody in this life that has money. It's not everybody in this life that is rich. If you happen to be rich, those riches came from the Lord. And definitely you're going to account for it. Can I get your amen? So, this morning... All of us here as not just servants of God, we are stewards. What are we? I didn't hear you properly. What are we? Why are we stewards? We are stewards because according to 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10, as every man had received the gifts. Now, he didn't say, as some men have received. He says, as every man has received the gift. And I've explained to you what the gift is. That gift is the manifold grace of God. The second sentence elaborates what the gift is. Even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. How many of us have the grace of God upon our lives? Every one of us, we have the grace of God. And the word manifold means Diverse, diverse. The graces are not the same for everybody. There are different, different kinds of grace upon the lives of every one of you here this morning. And the Bible is saying that as, as we have received this grace, this manifold grace, minister it. In other words, a responsibility has been put upon your shoulders to administer, to put to use, to employ the grace of God that is upon you. That is why Peter didn't use the word as servants. He used the word stewards. Stewards. Stewards because God has committed into our hands. And the Bible says we have received a man can receive nothing except it be given to him. True or false? So if you have received the grace of God, then it was given to you by God. 
And once it was given to you, and the instruction is that minister it, you are no longer a servant of God. You have become church. Again, you have become what? A steward because you have received the grace of God from the Lord. So, minister it. Now, if you agree that we are stewards of the grace of God, then there's no difference between all of us and those servants who we read about in the book of Matthew 25. Yes. There's no difference. In fact, you can find yourself right in that parable. You can find yourself right in that parable. Amen. In the book of Romans chapter 5, so no, 12, 12. Verse 6 downwards. Son, read that for me. Romans chapter 12, 6. Having therefore, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teached on teaching, or he that exalted on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Okay. Be Thank you. Yeah. Having then Gifts. Give me the number six again. Having, having, church, having, I said, give me the number six. Having then gifts differing according to the grace. You see, that word different simply means manifold, diverse. Now, he went ahead to let us know the different or diverse or manifold graces that had been given to God's people. Maybe we should take it a little bit. Let's look at the verse number four. Verse number four. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Again, ready, go. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. All members have not the same office. Shout it out. All members have not the same office. For the last time, all members have not the same office. The word office, praxis in Greek, simply means what you practice. My son here practices what? Teaching. Teaching. It's a rabbi in church, a rabbi. What do you practice? Banking. Who practices accounting here? Anybody practicing? Mr. Halote practices accounting. That is his office. Right? Yeah. Yes. So, everyone... 
of us in the same body. The body here is talking about the church. I think I explained that last week. But we have different practices, office. So then, the verse number six now goes ahead to give examples of the various offices or practice that we have in the body of Christ. And says that having then gifts, of course, you cannot practice accounting if you don't have the gift for it. Those of you who have read a little bit of accounting before, if you are supposed to take expenditure and post it to the ledger, and it can be very confusing. It can, it can be. So, you can only practice in that office because you have the gifts. Because you have what? The gifts. My son can only practice teaching mathematics because he has the gifts. Yeah. You know how some of us don't like mathematics at all? Of course, when I say some of us, excluding me. <laughs> Amen. But well, Pastor, did you say that you are a mathematician? I didn't say so. But I say, I know how to work mathematics. I never fail my mathematics. Hmm? Check my statistics in the university. It was an A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not saying I'm a mathematician, no. No. There are some areas I don't want to go there at all. So the people who have the proper gifts of, of, of mathematical brain, they practice that that is their office. This morning I'm standing in my office as a teacher of the word of God. And I have the grace or the gift or the talent for that. There are some people, they have the gift for driving. Even though all of us, all of us here, we drive. But do you know that some people, their office, that is the practice that they do in life is driving? Those are the people who drive the passenger cars in which we sit to travel across the breadth and length of this land. They are drivers. One of them is seated over here. I've known him for more than 15 years as a professional driver. So that is his office. Amen. So every one of us here, as long as you have received the gift of God, that is the grace of God, that grace has a purpose. It is intended to make you practice. And whatever practice it is, that practice becomes your office. So you have an office. I say you have an office. Office doesn't mean that you have a room where you go to sit. No. Officer doesn't mean that you have a room you sit called officer. Therefore, you have become an officer. Every one of us here, we are officers. You didn't hear me. When we say officer, we are not talking about soldier officer. Military officer. No. All of us here, we are, we are officers in our own. Finish it. Amen. So let's get back to that scripture again. 
So having then gift according to the grace that is given to us. Every gift is according to the grace of God. There's no gift that is not by the grace of God. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy. You see, what I'm trying to emphasize this morning is that there's no gift without a purpose. And no gift is given for giving sake. Every gift is given for you to practice it. So he said that if you have been given the gift of prophecy, what do you do? Oh, what do you do? Prophesy. Again, what do you do? Prophesy. He prophesy. The next one. Having then gifts. No, no, no. Go back to six. Go back to six. Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Then the next one. Seven. Or ministry. Now let me explain this word ministry. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have been called into the ministry or the spiritual ministry. Ministry here simply means service. Ministry here simply means what? Is you, you know, when you go to the government, this thing, they call it ministry of finance, ministry of agri, ministry of that. So ministry doesn't simply mean that it's a work of God. Are you here with me this morning? It means service. There are people who have been given the grace and, and they are good at serving. Oh. They are good at what? Serving. One of them is Kusinya Miche. And most of you can testify that he's not a lazy person at all. You call him and you need something. Akosi will go all out and help you out. Amen. There are some people who don't have time for you. You ask, can you help me? Aden. Who feels say me need you might be a now? Do you know that we have people like that? You think I have nothing to do? Why should I bother myself to come in and be at your service? Ministry means that there are people who have been called to serve. You go to the restaurant, there's somebody there who is always opening the door for you with all smile, close it with all smile. He or she never gets angry. There are people who are parking your cars for you. There are people, they are in service. But there are some people who have been given the gift of service and they are angry with everybody. For instance, when you go again to the government agencies, they are there to provide services. So, but they are virtually angry with anybody who comes there. When people get your money, you come here and you'll be ordering this about. What do you mean? So they'll throw your file somewhere, hide it, and when you come looking for it desperately, you have to put something under the table. They'll receive some judgment on the day of reckoning. Give it to us again. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry. In other words, you cannot be idle. Wait on it. Stay in that line. <laughs> I know people who give service. And they are so delighted in providing service that people just keep on giving to them giving to them so wait on that or he that teacheth on what on what teaching teaching The problem we have in this nation is that 
people cannot stay long and wait on the grace of God that has been given to them. They are, in a, they, they are in a hurry to see money. They are in a hurry to see money. They are in a hurry to see some big thing come out of it. Some of you know how many years I've been in, in the teaching ministry. All kinds of ministries have come. Very, very tantalizing ones. Like the prophetic, like the deliverance. And when those ministries came, people who are teachers and pastors, they all moved to become deliverance ministries, ministers. And they made a mess. And the prophetic came. By force, some people became prophets by force. What they haven't seen, they forced to see. <laughs> because the prophetic is attractive. It is what? And it is good if you have that gift. But I've stayed and waited in what? Teaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wait on the grace that God has given to you and use it. No grace is inferior to the other one. No grace is inferior. <clears throat> when we were returning from the U.S., we decided to check in our luggages, not inside, but the outside this thing. And those guys over there, one of them met us. And very, very serviceable, wanted to help us and so forth and so forth. And over there, tips are legal. Tipping is legal. In fact, if you see it over there. And then he carries your thing, weighs them, tax them, push them through. And then he's standing there for the tips. And I see people giving tips of $20, $10, $50. And I said to myself, maybe if I should <laughs> relocate to the U.S. one day, <laughs> I want to be a baggage I want to be tagging people's baggage. Hey, I mean, you are talking about Heathrow. Heathrow. No, sorry, sorry. JFK. <coughs> you know, and, um, the amount of planes that take off, the number of people who check in every day. Ordinary person checking bags in. And the amount of money that is given to him in his hands. Oh, my God. Amen. So, so no work is inferior. No work. Praise God. Can we finish that? Or oh, he that exhorted. Exhortation means people who encourage. There are some people, eh, when something happens to you, they'll just come and say, oh, and yes, she, why? Kuse, kuse. But there are those who have time for you, they will check on you, they will come and visit you, they will call you, they will use the scriptures, they will pray for you, not once. They will do so until... You yourself, you realize that, nah, 
this person has been an encourager. Exhorting simply means a person who encourages. And there are people in the house of God who have that gift. Who has that gift? He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. You see, all the gifts, there's a way to do it. The one who gives. I am a giver. In addition to my pastoral grace and a teacher, I am a giver. I know this. Nobody needs to tell me. And nobody compels me to do it. I do it when nobody is asking me to do it. Hallelujah. Because I know it is not only the teaching grace and the pastoral grace. Because to him who much is given, much is required. There are some people too. Now, listen to me. When we talk about this gift, this grace, we are not talking about some people who have been given their grace to give offerings. So, so, this morning, before you misunderstand me, and say, ah, pastor says that some people, they have been called to give offerings and tithes in church. I am not one of those people. Please. We need your offering here. I say we need your tithe here. When we talk about this one, we are talking about grace. I have not been called with the grace of driving, but I drive. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. These are people who <coughs> it, 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 it's like they share anything they have, they share. If I know a lot of people here who are like that. What I don't know is whether they know that this grace is upon their lives. Yeah. There are people here who, who, who have bought shoes for me. Not one. Not one. Are, are you here? I can tell that these are people who share. They, share. they have that passion for sharing. For sharing. That's what I'm talking about. Mrs. Anson, I think for, I don't know how many years now, especially when they return from London, every morning, there is food on my table Sunday. The day the food doesn't come, then it means that that day she, she didn't come to church and the husband is not in church. What I don't know is when she leaves us to join the husband, what will happen to my... <laughs> Meslina, can you replace her? So I'm looking seriously for a substitute. How many of you agree with me? Some of you here, when they bring the food that you have been coming to enjoy. So pray, let us intercede. Amen. Let us intercede. And sometimes I'm like, what? Every Sunday, Amen. And, and she doesn't give to my office. She began with my office. But now she gives to the pastors as well. She doesn't charge us. And sometimes I sit and I say, ah, at least this woman must be spending close to about two to three hundred CDs every Sunday to do that. 
If you think I'm doubting, when we close, come to my office. You, you can feel it. I'll let you feel it. Then you know that the cost that I'm talking about is not, a, it's not a, a, a exaggeration. Corn beef worm, a bit of her chicken worm, a bit of a sandwich. No more be brave. I say, if you doubt, when we close, you go to my office there. Of course, the first thing I ask you, what, what are you doing in my office? <laughs> Amen. I, I'm just trying to spend this money to explain to you. All right? I know most of you do things that I'm not aware of. I'm just using these ones as an example. As I said, there's a lady here who provides my shoes for me. Amen. So I cannot mention, but I know there are a lot of people here who are doing so good. So good. And you can tell that this is a gift. Hallelujah. Can we finish that? So, he that ruled with diligence. Uh, rulers are people who are in authority. For instance, in this church, I'm a ruler. Okay, so an authority has been given to you. People's lives have been committed into my hands. And he said that if you are, you are a ruler, you are an authority, do it with what? Diligence. Do it with what? Diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Now, mercy, uh, they are like the givers also. But they have this chenny stomach. When they see the disadvantage, something happens to them. They feel like going all out. There are people who single-handedly have financed orphanages. Orphanages. Why do you think they finance the orphanages? Is that mercy? They see the disadvantage that these people have in society and they go all out. These are people who God has graced them with what we call the grace of mercy. Now, all these examples, the Bible is encouraging us that depending on the gift or the grace that God has given unto you, stay and function, of sorry, function in that gift. Can I get your amen? amen. Can I get a second one? Hallelujah. So as every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as God stewards of the manifold grace of God. Why? Because in all stewardship or stewards, it is required that a man be found faithful. What is the meaning of the word faithfulness? What is faithfulness? One, it simply means fidelity or loyalty. Fidelity or loyalty. You know, fidelity is It's, it's uh, when you, you are strong or a strong adherent of a faith. For instance, the Muslims call Christians infidels. Infidels. In other words, we are unbelievers. How many of you know that they call us infidels? Yeah, they, they, they mean that we are unbelievers. But it's not just believe. 
even though it's belief, it goes beyond belief and comes to being trustful. Trust. Amen. Now, the word infidel comes from the Latin language. You all know that English language is derived from both Greek and Latin, right? I know there are people here who probably way back, maybe in their sisters were learn, le learning Latin in school, right? Good. It was supposed to aid you understand the English language. Now, the word fidelity comes from the Latin word called fides, F-I-D-E-S. Fides. Now, fides in the, Latin, in, the English, in the Latin word means faith. 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 So if a Latin man uses the word fides, he's saying, he's talking about faith. So, faith has to do with confidence and belief and trust. Faith has to do with confidence, belief, and trust. So, when we say faithfulness, it comes from the word faithful. Fidis, faith, therefore faithful. Fidis means faith in English. And so the word faithful, therefore the word faithful, or hence the word faithful. Amen. Amen. I'm supposed to be a faithful husband to the covenant I made with Rebecca. Rebecca is supposed to be a faithful wife to Pastor Spencer based on the covenant she made with me. You understand? You understand? Great. So to be faithful now means we come from the word fides. To be faithful therefore means to be trustful loyal and steadfast to whatever or whoever you owed allegiance to. To be faithful, remember the topic, your grace requires your faithfulness. To be faithful, therefore, means to be trustful, loyal, and steadfast to whatever or whoever you owed allegiance to. In the case of the narrative in Matthew 25, the allegiance of the stewards is supposed to be towards the Lord who gave them his goods. I'm giving an example. The allegiance is supposed to be towards their Lord who gave them his goods. So the allegiance must be towards, number one, a person. Or let me put it, the benefactor. Must, must be given to the benefactor. Two, the allegiance must be towards the purpose of the talent, the gift, or the grace. The purpose, the talent, the purpose of the talent, the gift, or the grace. I hope you understand what I'm saying. 
To be faithful means that you are trustful, you are loyal, and you, your loyalty and trust, you owe it to or the allegiance to a person. It can also be to, that is what I mean by the benefactor, the one who gave you the responsibility or the gift. The allegiance who can be towards the purpose of the gifts, the talent, or the grace. Why do you think God gave me the teaching grace? Yes, I can be faithful to God, but I need to also know and understand the purpose for which the teaching grace was put upon me. It is not for me. It is supposed to bring edification to you. To you. So therefore, I need to be faithful to the teaching grace. I need to be faithful to the teaching grace and those who become partakers of that gift. If I decide not to be faithful to the teaching gift, I can come on Sunday and tell you stories. You know what I'm talking about? And tell you stories. <laughs> if you know the amount of time that goes into studying and finding out from the Holy Spirit, whether what you are understanding is the right thing, you, you begin to appreciate what I'm talking about. There are people who say they are teachers, but they always teach wrong doctrine, error. But here you are receiving unadulterated doctrine of God's word. You know why a lot goes into doing that? <clears throat> a lot of people who sat under my ministry, most of them, they are, they are into ministry. Some of them are teaching. Some of them are doing so many things. Like Paul, you are all partakers of the grace of God. That is upon my life. You are what? Some of you here, I'm sure some ministries need to take you and use you as ministers of God and precisely teachers. Amen. Amen. I cannot give you the gift of grace, but because you are a, a beneficiary of this grace, naturally, the spirit of teaching is resting upon your lives. Amen. So, number one, I am faithful to the one who called me. Number two, I am faithful to the gift because if I don't use it properly for your mutual benefit, I will account for it. If I use it wrongly and teach wrong doctrine and mislead you, I will account for it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Because there are people who are uh, men pleasers. You go to any workplace, they are the first to report people to their bosses. But when it comes to their work proper, they are not faithful to it. They are not faithful to it. That is what has accounted for the state of this nation. We vote and put people in power. And they are not faithful to us. Do you know that we put them in power? Hello? Who gave them the power? We, are they faithful to you? 
are they faithful in doing their job? They are not. Did you, did you see parliament in the last one week? Well, I don't think that this will be a contempt of parliament. Because it was on the TV. What I saw in the TV is what I'm talking about. 30, 30 something, you know, people on the opposite side. And the majority, about 28. A parliament that is supposed to be over 270 something, if I'm not wrong. And a budget has been read, it's supposed to sit down there and talk. They are not there. And, and the speaker had complained about attendance over and over and over again. Now that I'm talking about attendance, I know some of you here are guilty. And lateness. But it's, it's, it's like, a, it's a, it's like a, a canker. It's eating into us. And we care less about the fact that this work that has been committed to our hands, I need to be faithful to the work itself because some people are supposed to be mutual beneficiary of this grace. And I need to also be faithful to the one who gave me the responsibility. It is, it is, we don't care. Hello, church. We don't care. It's a sad thing. One day I confronted this electricity people who read the meter. For a long time, my daughter was helping me, you know, to get people to read the meter and give me proper bill. They continually sent me, you know, one bill all the time. Whether they were overbilling me or underbilling me, they don't know. They don't come and read the meter and something comes. So one day somebody showed up and I confronted the person. I said, you are part of the people who is pulling this nation down. I hope you understand me. If you go to the flats here, there are people from that company that work, but all the people who have connected light illegally here, all over, and they are not paying they see it. And nobody is taking any action. Yet, because some of few of us will pay. Listen, this is not just about the house of God. It's about your home. It's about this nation. It's about the church. Are you with me? You've got to be faithful to your home. The little things that you have to do at all, you have to be faithful. When I wake up four o'clock to pray, it's a constant thing. I get down, go to take some warm water, and the first thing I do is to switch off the outside light. Because at 4 o'clock, 4.30, no thief is coming to my house to come and steal anything. I'm saving power. And across our road, a little number of kiosks and containers and they can leave the light on. Trust me, 8.30, their lights are on. And I ask, do these people really pay? They don't. I 
without apologies to my daughter Esther. Some of them come there, they receive tips, and that's it. They do it here. Go. When you are going, every little box of kiosks there, they have light. They, they play music. They play music. Yeah, they don't pay anything. And we have electricity flats over here. They are here. They see it. They know it. They are not committed to the job. They are not. How can we go on? That is why Paul said that in all stewardship, or, or in all stewards, it is required for a man to be faithful. 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 There are people here who doesn't have jobs to do. Sometimes you want to do something for them. Or you want to give them something. You put them there, they'll go and disgrace you. They'll go and disgrace you. Because some of us, we have certain opportunities. But you don't, the people are not faithful. They are not committed to anything. You put them into the, you know, and the next thing that they disgrace you, they spoil your name. Mm hmm. Is somebody here this morning? It's in the house. It's in our, our little, little homes. It's in the nation. And the price we are paying today in this nation is because of lack of faithfulness. Ask me which nation in Europe is endowed like African nations, and particularly, we are talking about this jurisdiction called Ghana. Tell me, why should our daughters and brothers be walking about recklessly into drugs, into prostitution, and all that? What does it take? What does it take? It takes faithfulness. It takes faithfulness. That's all it takes. Yes, technology is, is there. But we are employing the technologies to steal. Am I talking to somebody? If we want to be faithful, we can help everybody here. <laughs> I say we can help everybody here. <laughs> Huh? And there'll be no single poor person here. Believe me, we can do it. This lady sitting behind Mr. Alote over there, this lady there, I can't remember how much it is. Small amount of money. I said, what do you do? He said, I'm, I'm selling the market. I said, take. I sat down with her, taught her what to do. I, I have to say, this lady has been so faithful. She has bought a land, documented, registered, and she came to show me to say thank you. Out of what you gave me, Today, I bought the land. The land is not anywhere. It's in a gated community. <laughs> so,
So another time I called her. I said, for doing well, I want to give you more money so that you can boost. He said, no, 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 Papa, it's, it's okay. This one is okay. And somebody here would have said, Fabra, 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 Fabra. She said, no, 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 Papa. No, it's enough. This one is enough. I don't need that money. Faithfulness. So if I get two or ten people and another three, and another three, and another three, can you imagine what will be happening here? No one person will be poor in this church. Are you with me? In any case, nobody owes you anything, no. <laughs> nobody owes you anything. But as a result of the love of God, we do what we are supposed to do. And the grace of God, we do so. But when people become unfaithful, it hurts other people. I say it hurts other people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're supposed to be faithful or pay allegiance to the benefactor, the purpose of the talent, the gift, or the grace. And thirdly, we're supposed to be, our allegiance is supposed to be towards the regulating framework. When I say regulating framework, I'm talking about systems. You see, we live in a society. We depend on one another. And we agree that if it must be done, this is the way it must be done. That is a system. And there's always a regulation, a framework by which you operate and practice that gift. We are not a banana state. Everybody does what he wants, anyhow. It doesn't work like that. But people want work, but they abuse the system. Come on now. Come on. They abuse what? The system. Teachers are abusing the system. Pastors are abusing the system. Politicians are abusing the system. Uh, civil servants and civil whatever, they are all abusing the system. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody this morning? If teachers are not abusing the system, why would they, you know, teach few hours or reluctantly and then go back to the same people at their home and give their best. When, when we were growing in the 70s, <laughs> there was no, nothing like private, uh, what do you, what, even though I taught you the trick. It looks like I'm, I'm guilty myself, eh? All of you here, one way or the other, you have employed private teachers to come and teach your children. When we were growing up, nobody knew that private teacher something. So we don't teach the best in the school, but we give our best in private tutorial. Abuse of the system. Mm -hmm. And we, we all help them. Everybody is doing it. If you don't do it, your child will not pass well. So we are helping them. Everybody is entitled to free counseling. 
and visit to the pastor's office. Why is it that you go to some places you can't see the pastor? It is by special arrangement and there are fees you have to pay. Why? Everybody look at me here. Is there anybody here who had to see me and never had a chance to see me before? And had to pay a fee? And had to go through somebody before? We are abusing the system. The, fr the regulatory framework. Some of you are doing it in your offices. I say you are doing it in your offices. I say you are doing it in your offices. You see, you can't say amen. I say you are doing it in your offices. No, no, no. I didn't say you should say mercy. <laughs> you are calling for mercy yourself. This nation is suffering now. We are killing ourselves. We are killing ourselves. It is required in stewardship that a man be found. Shout it out. A man be found. <clears throat> anyway. Let, let, me, let, me, let me end it over here and continue on next week. Do you agree with me? You said yes. Okay. Bow down your heads. <laughs> Bow down your heads. <laughs> Since you said yes. <laughs> and you are pleading for mercy. <laughs> Let's allow mercy to work right now in the name of Jesus. Shall Lord have mercy on us. Lord have mercy on me. Lord have mercy on this nation. Forgive our unfaithfulness. Forgive my unfaithfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. We plead for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And heal us of this unfaithfulness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, put your hands together.